Uh, but I do want to introduce our next speaker who is joining us also direct from Venezuela, and that is Jesus Rodriguez Espinosa. He is the founder and editor of Orinoco Tribune, which will be soon celebrating five years. Uh, I will announce uh, that event uh, when Jesus uh, closes his remarks, um, and is also the former uh, Consul General of Venezuela in Chicago in the United States. Uh, and uh, has joined us to shed some light and, and start some discussion about U.S. intervention in Venezuela in the form of what's happening with the Essequibo, Exxon Mobile, um, and I'm looking forward to Jesus's perspective on, on this important struggle and component of U.S. attacks on Venezuela's uh, on Venezuela and Venezuela's assertion of their sovereignty and self determination. Jesus, welcome. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. And thank you, everyone in the panel. Un abrazo para Tommy, para Álvaro. Uh, uh, before, you know, starting talking about Guyana, I believe that it's important to highlight, to remark that Alex Avi is a political prisoner of the U.S. And, and, and the fact that he, he is jailed in a Florida prison is disgusting. So everyone should be working in supporting and and helping in the freedom of Ali Saab. Uh, so, so I believe that's very important to say it because some people got trapped in that, uh, you know, media defamation, smearing campaign that Alvaro was talking about when he first talked. So, so without any kind of doubt i could say that that what happened to alex Saab is a uh, illegality so anyway i i i believe that it's important to say that for those that might have doubts about uh, who alex Saab is and what he did uh, so now i'm gonna jump to 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 the issue that you asked me to to talk about today and it's basically uh about um, the current uh, circumstances that has been developing in Venezuela around our historical dispute over the Esequibo territory. So uh, I want to, um, I'm going to highlight two important issues for international audiences because uh, I, I have noticed because we interact a lot with, with people from outside Venezuela that, um, there's confusion about some issues uh, related to this particular one. So uh, I want to raise uh, the, 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 the most important, the two most important ones that I have detected. Uh, uh, and then I'm gonna try to very briefly uh, pass through the historical developments around the Guyana, Venezuela, Esequibo uh, territory dispute. So um, first of all, in in the in, in the part that I want to talk about the how the mis misinterpretations that are out there about this issue, I want to highlight that despite what you hear around there, Venezuela is not the aggressor in this, you know, in this uh, circumstances, in this latest development, in this dispute. And some people, I believe, and that's very understandable because they say, okay, Guyana is small country, it's poorer, uh, Venezuela is bigger, have oil, and 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 and, and he's the big guy uh, against the, the the small guy. And some people naturally tend to favor or to give the benefit of the doubt to the weakest between quotations one. Uh, so I want to highlight that this is not the case. Venezuela is not an aggressor state. Uh, and, and to support that, I'm just going to mention a few, uh, you know, facts that people should take into consideration where they are thinking that Venezuela is the aggressor in this issue. Uh, one of them is uh, that Guyana has been making military drills with the U.S., with the U.S. South Com South, uh, Southern Command uh, recurrently, at least for the last decade, especially during the times when the U.S. was trying to harder to overthrow uh, President Maduro. 
uh, another important element to 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 see when you uh, in this particular issue, Guyana was part of the Lima Group. Guyana was among those countries that wanted to oust uh, President Maduro with the pushing of the U.S. Uh, thankfully, that group uh, is already extinct, but they were active members of the Lima Group, a group that dip diplomatically uh, attacked and isolated Venezuela for several years. Uh, another important uh, fact that you have to uh, to to take into consideration is that Guyana is present in Venezuela at this very moment to bring the case to the UN Security Council with the help of their partners. You know what their partners are. Uh, uh, Guyana is also giving concessions even in waters that are out of the territorial dispute that belongs uh, to Venezuela. So any country, imagine that in your country, you have a neighbor country that is giving oil concessions or, or, or gold concessions or diamond concessions or whatever kind of concessions on your territory. So any country has the right to fight against that. So that's what we have been doing. Uh, so, 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 so those are a few uh, elements that I believe that are important to highlight in this particular, you know, distortion that I was talking about. Another one is the referendum. Uh, uh, some people believe that the referendum that we are calling that we're going to have this Sunday to exercise our sovereignty over that territory, uh, uh, they are saying that the referendum is to. Uh, somehow green light a military offensive from Venezuela towards Guyana. That's a lie. I mean, that is not happening. That's not going to happen. Actually, President Maduro has been inviting the Guyanese president to sit and talk, to try to find solutions to this problem. It's actually the opposite of what Venezuela has been doing. But because of the uh, uh, rejection of the Guyanese authorities towards that proposal, Venezuela has not had other option that calling for a referendum to try to uh, galvanize the Venezuelan society towards our historical rights over that territory. So, uh, uh, I mean, those were two important issues that I believe uh, uh, are important to highlight because there are there is confusion uh, out there about uh, you know the the this particular dispute. Uh, and now I want to jump very briefly towards very important um, landmarks, uh, historical, uh, you know, points uh, uh, in, the, in this particular dispute. Uh, first of all, the, 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 is that when Venezuela got its independence, I'm talking about 1810, uh, 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 the borders of Venezuela were attached to the map of the Capitania General de Venezuela of 1812. I mean, and that has been like that for centuries. And those that map have the Esequibo territory belonging to Venezuela. So I believe that is very important to highlight that because Venezuela has the, the, the deeds to support its claim. Then, of course, we spent like more than a decade in our independence war, and 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 um, and after uh, our independence, and uh, especially after the death of Simón Bolívar, Venezuela entered into a very dramatic phase of civil wars that distracted uh, us from the from the defense of the Esequibo territory. And and while we were in those civil wars. Uh, the British were taking uh, that territory that belonged to us. So uh, in 1989, after several years of Venezuelan pushing for a resolution to the problem, uh, uh, a ruling in Paris was announced. Uh, and, and and we call it the night the 1899 Paris ruling, which basically was a uh, uh, a fabrication uh, 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 made by the U.S. and the U.K., uh, basically giving the, the territory uh, of Esequibo to Guyana, to the British, during uh, because Guyana didn't exist then. Uh, and that decision was taken by two U.S. Um, representatives that allegedly were uh, 
uh, uh, defending Venezuelan rights, two UK representatives and one Russian. And they took in five days the decision of, you know, take uh, like more than 150,000 square kilometers from Venezuelan territory to the UK. So, so uh, that's to give you an idea of how uh, bad uh, experience we have had uh, leaving the decision over our territorial rights to third parties. And that explains on how why Venezuela has been uh, opposing a lot the 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 international uh, court of justice uh, participation in the dispute. A few decades after the Paris ruling, uh, a letter or a will by one of the negotiators called Malé Prévence, one of the ne negotiators in the Paris ruling of, 19, of 1899 uh, was unveiled. And in that letter, Malé Prévost says that everything that happened in Paris in 1899 was fake, that everything was already agreed between the U.S. and the U.K. to give that territory to the British. So, and, and, and he published that letter after his death because he was ashamed of what happened. And because of that letter, Venezuela pushed for decades until in 1966, uh, we reached an agreement with the UK, with Guyana that already existed, but was not yet completely independent. And of course us, and, and we signed the Geneva Agreement that somehow stipulated the mechanism uh, that was going to be used to solve that problem. And basically, it refers to the United Nations uh, uh, dispute resolution mechanisms uh, uh, to do that, but always with a mutual agreement of the two parties, of Venezuela and Guyana. So that's this 1966 Geneva Agreement is what Venezuela is the only document that Venezuela recognizes as valid. And uh, but in 19 in 2015, ExxonMobil discovered oil reserves in Guyana, and there uh, uh, everything started to change. So uh, they, they, uh, pay attention to the dates because in 2015, uh, 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 ExxonMobil find uh, uh, oil, uh, you know, in in Guyana's territory, uh, in the Esequibo territory, in the waters of Guyana, in the waters disputed with Venezuela. And uh, in 2016, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon uh, referred a case that didn't uh, follow all the steps of a peaceful resolution of conflicts defined in the UN char charter. Uh, he unilaterally and without the 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 mutual agreement of Guyana Venezuela he sent the case to the International Court of Justice and since that very moment Venezuela has been rejecting the the ¿cómo se dice in English how you say that la, the scope of the of the of the of the court uh, and uh, but uh, a few weeks ago a few uh, a few months ago Venezuela uh, sorry, Guyana, after several months of, you know, dealing with, the, uh, with you know, uh, giving concessions and granting concessions, finally granted conce all concessions to international oil corporations, of course, including ExxonMobil as one of the most important uh, oil, you know, corporations uh, uh, that is going to take oil out of the, the territory that is in dispute. And, and... Uh, and that's what takes us where we are, which is basically that under everything that I have told you, uh, uh, President Maduro and the Venezuelan National Assembly decided a few weeks ago to call for a referendum, uh, not to ask Venezuela if Guyana, uh, the Esequibo territory was ours, but to... Uh, to ask Venezuela what to do, Venezuelans, what to do to exercise our right 
towards that territory. So there are five questions in, the, in, in, in this referendum that we are going to uh, have uh, this next weekend. And the five questions are this one. I'm going to have to read it to you uh, to avoid any, you know, misunderstanding. The first one says, do you agree to reject by all means under the law the line fraudulent, fraudulently imposed on the Paris Arbitration Award of 1899 that seeks to deprive us of our executive territory? That's the first question. The second question, do you support the 1966 Geneva Agreement as the only valid legal instrument to reach a practical and satisfactory solution for Venezuela and Guyana regarding the controversy over the Sequibo territory? That's the second one. The third one, do you agree with Venezuela's historical position of not recognizing the jurisdiction of the International Court of Justice to resolve the territorial controversy over the Sequibo territory? That's the third one. The fourth one, do you agree to oppose by all means under the law Guyana's claim to unilaterally dispose of territorial waters pending the limitation illegally and in, viola in violation of international law? And the last one is, do you agree with the creation of the Esequibo Guy Guayana state and the development of an accelerated plan for the comprehensive care of the current and future population of that territory including the, grant is, the granting of citizenship and Venezuelan identity cards per the Geneva Agreement and international law, consequently incorporating state state in the map uh, of the Venezuelan territory. So those are the five uh, uh, questions uh, that we are going to vote for this Sunday. Uh, there are many contradictions among the opposition, of course, the Venezuelan opposition leadership if you can call it like that, uh, uh, and many of them are not really knowing what to do, but uh, the majority, even even op very important opposition leaders, has been uh, you know joining the, the the call you know for Venezuelans to participate in the referendum. So that's basically what is happening. If you have any questions, I, of course, will try to, to, to clarify them. And un abrazo for everyone.